Hey, what's up, everyone? Nick here. A happy Monday, the start of another week. And you know, on the Nick Simmons Show, I like to start with what I call my Monday monologue. Today, I'm reading mean comments that were written about me on Let's Run. Oh, it hurts so bad. Let's roll that clip right now. All right, you guys, today we are talking about the haters. All right, when you're setting big goals, when you're doing awesome things, there will be haters. You know, the last two episodes, we've been talking about goal setting, and I'm trying to help you guys achieve your big, audacious goals. And as you're on that path, as you're getting closer and closer to your goals, that's when the haters start popping up, when you start having success. And I've dealt with it pretty much every step of my way, whether it was in high school, college, or especially as a pro. There are all these naysayers that want to drag you down with them. And it's an incredibly challenging thing to deal with when you first start getting these these detractors. Um, and I want to talk about how I've dealt with it in the past and how you can shrug off that hate and continue to kick ass. So today I thought it would be kind of funny if we went into this website. It's called letsrun.com. For those of you who have never been to this website, they do a phenomenal job of aggregating running related news um, from around the world. And I think as a news site, they're actually pretty good, but they have this toxic cesspool dumpster fire in the back called the message boards. It's just like every other message board on every part of the internet where it starts off somewhat cerebral and, and intellectual, and then it just dives straight into racist banter, misogyny, you name it, it's there. Um, I could go, we could literally create an entire episode of just reading some of these hilarious uh, threads. But today I wanted to focus on one that specifically kind of targets one of the goals I set for myself earlier this year. Now my big fitness goal for 2021 was to deadlift, still is to deadlift 500 pounds and go straight into a sub five minute mile. Um, it's something that combines two of my favorite passions, lifting and running. Um, but in order to do something like this, I've got to make some major, major changes. And predominantly that meant bulking up. I've put on about 15 pounds, maybe only 10 pounds this year. Um, and you know, obviously as I'm making these videos, People are surprised maybe that I've put on this much weight. So the title of this thread started by uh, some user named Jammin, uh, Tubby Nick Simmons runs a quite impressive workout of six by 200 at 26 to 27 pace. Uh, first of all, I guess we, my sister would call this a compul salt. It is uh, an insult disguised with a tiny bit of complimentary mention in there. He says a quite impressive workout. So I'm supposed to feel good about that. Or, you know, or he's, he's mitigating his insult by calling me tubby. Now, for those of you not watching the video version of this, uh, I am 37 years old. I weigh at this moment about 184 pounds. Um, and I don't think very many people would call me tubby. I don't consider myself tubby. Um, I work out twice a day, almost every single day. Anyways, but it's beyond the uh, the purpose of this video. But he goes on to say he's deceptively fast, looks to be waddling along at a much slower pace if you look at the shots around 313 to 320, for instance. You know, this is something I've got through my entire freaking career, that I was too short, that I was too bulky, that I waddled when I ran, that I was too white. I got that a few times, uh, that I was too this, too that, that I'll never be able. And then started back in high school, you guys, when I started having success on the track, they said, well, he's good for Idaho, but he'll never make it in college. And then I won seven NCAA titles. Well, he's good at the D3 level, but he'll never be able to beat the D1 kids. I beat every single person in America except for one professional my senior year. He, he's, he's good at the professional level, but he'll never make an Olympic Team, and we all know where that story went. Every single time you level up, there are going to be people trying to drag you back down. You have to ignore those people. This thread then goes on to, to go in a lot of different directions, but you know, here's another one of these co classic comp assaults from somebody goes by the name Willamette. Has there been a more ungainly looking world class distance runner than Nick Simmons? That's not a knock. No, that is a knock. You just called me ungainly. Hats off to the guy. He may have gotten more out of his innate ability than any other runner I can think of. That said, even in his prime, he looks so unsmooth. There's another one. He's, he's not smooth enough. But I actually will take one nugget from this that I think is a, is a really good lesson. He may have gotten more out of his innate ability than any other runner. Than any other runner I can think of. Is there anything that we can ask of ourselves than to get the most out of what we were born with? I always say, you know, we are all born with, with a deck of cards or, or a hand of cards, right? Some of us are born with two seven off suits. Some of us are born with a royal flush. I mean, if you're David Rudisha, the world record holder in the 800, 
You were born with a royal flush. Someone once asked me if I could create from, from you know, uh, the, the ball of clay, the perfect 800 meter runner, who would he be? I said, well, he'd be, you know, six foot two of East African descent, raised at altitude. Oh, and if you could make him a Maasai warrior while you're at it, you know, that would be great. Well, there's David Rudisha for you. So, you know, I wasn't dealt that genetic hand, but I was dealt a pretty good hand. I was dealt, you know, full house, but I played that hand better than anyone. And I think that's all we can really ask is, what hand were we dealt? Now play the hell out of those cards. Even if you were born with a 2-7 off suit, I want you guys to be the best damn player of that 2-7 off suit that you can. Now, there are some funny ones here just telling you. Says, it looks like a running meatball. Should need 50 to 60 miles per week to shave off some pounds. A running meatball. Okay, that's fine. This is Nick Simmons from Eugene, Oregon. Listen to the crowd. Run, and here comes Simmons in Oregon. One you know, I, I just, when I was young, when I was, you know, a, a high school athlete or a college athlete, something like that would have really, really hurt me. And I remember as a pro, especially in my, in my early part of my career, I couldn't read message boards like this because developing a confidence, especially for a young athlete, especially in running, having that swagger, that confidence is absolutely critical to running your best. You have to step on the track and trust in your body, trust that you did the work and trust that you can go out there and kick ass. And when you read something like that, the, just that word meatball can sit in the back of your mind and, and, and make it difficult for you to have the confidence you need to have to make moves. Um, furthermore, it looks like a running meatball. Well, that's exactly what I should be looking like right now. I'm 185 pounds trying to get up to 200 pounds so I can deadlift 500. You know, I, do, I, I just, I, again, when you're trying to achieve big things, there will be detractors. James the Amateur says here, uh, in a, in continuing in the thread, I fully agree. I think Nick is one of the very few to absolutely hit his genetic limit. There's no way someone built like him should have been sub 143, especially with his bizarre form. So now it's my bizarre form. You know, this is why I have adopted the name, the bison. There was a sports illustrated reporter that actually said, you know, if, if David Rudisha is a gazelle gliding along, then Nick Simmons is the American bison running unfathomably fast, just lumbering through the plains and bison are extremely fast creatures. Uh, but they, you know, they, they don't look like they should be able to run that fast. So again, if I had let all of these things about my form, about my size, about my body type, about my skin color, if I'd let all of these people who are constantly critiquing me weigh me down, then I never would have had a chance to rise up and prove what I was ultimately capable of. So I'm, I'm grateful to have had people along the way that built me up while others were trying to tear me down. And the last one of this thread, you know, the thread closes out by do what your coaches say. That's the username here. Wow, his voice is grating to hear, and he's a pro YouTuber. The man overcomes his weaknesses. I have to hand it to him. Thanks again for another comp assault. And I do overcome my weaknesses, and that's all we can ask of ourselves is to rise up and, again, using that poker analogy, play the hand that we're dealt to the best of our abilities. Now, I have three takeaways here that I really want to jump into um, because I think, <laughs> you know, as funny as, as all this is, these can be really hurtful for some people. Again, at 37, I just it's water off a duck's back to me. But if you're young and if you're seeing things on, on social media about you, seeing things on message boards or hearing things behind your back, I want to give you three takeaways to just let that, you know, again, roll off your back. Number one, when you have haters, you know you're doing something right. It's a famous quote. And I remember reading that when I was younger and it, it really put my fears at ease. Yeah, there's a reason you have haters. These, these people are jealous, all right? If, if somebody goes online and they are critiquing you in this way, they're jealous. And that's where this is coming from. It's coming from a place of jealousy. Uh, number two, there will be critics. And I want to you know, weigh in on this. I think a lot of times we say, oh, it's inappropriate to talk about an athlete's body type. No, it's not. It's absolutely appropriate to talk about an athlete's body type. They're athletes. They use their body uh, in their work. Whether it's male or female, I'm sorry. If you sign up to be a pro athlete, people are going to talk about your body. I recognized that when I was running pro. And I, you know, as much as I didn't like being called a meatball or didn't like being called tubby, I didn't think it was inappropriate for people to talk about my body type. I thought it was chicken shit if they didn't use their real name. And I maintain that. If I post anything online, it's posted as Nick Simmons. I don't go on and post anonymously like a coward because that's exactly what that is. It's cowardly. Um, so pros and public fists, excuse me, pros and public figures are asking 
for criticism and they've got to be okay with that. As you rise up, as you continue to kick ass in whatever field you choose, whether it's in business, whether it's in sport, whether it's in life, recognize that your success is drawing attention and you know whether you like it or not, that's, that's part of being a successful person. You got to be okay with it. But that leads me into number three, not everyone's opinion matters. I'm going to say that again because it's a really hard one for some people. Not everyone's opinion matters. When I was running professionally, I had about five people, maybe 10 people in my life whose opinion was extremely important to me. My mom and dad, my sister. I know when I, when I started dating my wife, uh, Tiana, her, her opinion mattered a ton to me. Her parents mattered. As an athlete, I really only listened to about three or four people, my coach, my strength trainer, Coach Sam, and my sports psychologist. So if I had a bad race or if I had a great race, I, I, I really only listened to those four people who were chirping in my ear because their opinion were the only ones that mattered. You know, not, uh, not the anonymous cowards on the message boards, not social media people, fans or detractors. There are areas of our life where some people's opinion, they just don't matter. And you got to ignore those people. Um, you know, I kind of le left myself some notes here, you know, especially the anonymous cowards. These people online, again, I think they should, if they take some pleasure in, in trying to drag other people down, you know, more power to you, I guess. But their opinion doesn't matter to me. All right. So in closing, as you continue along your path to greatness, Ignore the people that are trying to drag you down. They're sad. They're unhappy. They want to bring you down with them. Be the kind of person that surrounds yourself with people who will lift you up. And when you hit success, all those haters, be the kind of person that inspires those haters to stop hating on people and start achieving their own goals. That's what I'm trying to do here with the Nick Simmons Show is try to help you guys achieve your goals. Um, whether you value my opinion or not, you are welcome to it. Um, on this show, we are going to take some live callers, and they can ask me anything. I would say, ask me anything. Nothing's off limits. Let's get to the first caller.